Michael Myers, makers of Mum, the safer deodorant, and Vitalis for well-groomed hair, bring you Duffy's Tavern, starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. <laughs> Hello, Duffy's Tavern. Where do you leave? Meet the Archie, the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. How's business? Uh, well, let me put it this way. Uh, if business was a prize fighter, we'd be throwing water in his face. <laughs> huh? Grogan's across the street is doing great business? I don't know about that, Duffy. There's just as many people coming out of his place as there is going in. <laughs> huh? Look, Duffy, uh, there's a million jobs open, and if you don't like the way I'm running this place, why don't you fire me? Huh? Duffy, after eight years, do you have to be so hasty? <laughs> huh? Look, Virus, I have a TL for you. Compared to you, Simon Legree is the smiling Irishman. And as long as you're in this mood, how about a raise? Uh, <clears throat> hello? <clears throat> that chiseler. That crumb. That miser. That... That... Stunk? Stunk? Uh, Eddie, quit defending the guy. <laughs> Works me like a dog. Seven days a week. On me feet. Fifteen hours a day. Where's that newspaper? You're sitting on it. Oh. I'm gonna look up them help wanted ads. Uh, so yeah. Look and see if you can find an ad saying, Wanted lazy bartender. Just a minute. Bartending ain't the only thing I can do. There's a hundred jobs I'm qualified for. A hundred? Yeah. Name one. Well, uh, uh, uh... Well? Okay, so there's only 99. <laughs> now, uh, let's look at that paper. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, accountants, mm -hmm. bakers, uh, barbers... Mm -hmm. uh... Anything there for an experienced chicken plucker? <laughs> Eddie, please. <laughs> Let me see that paper. <laughs> Maybe I can find a job for you. Oh, you have the job at the circus. Circus, huh? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, what is it? Yeah, it says, wanted ambitious young man to place head in lion's mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Better read the next one. <laughs> wanted plastic surgeon to contact man who formerly held job listed above. <laughs> Eddie, give me the paper. I'll look up my own ad. Uh, hey, hey, Archie. Huh? What did you say to Papa on the telephone? Why? Well, when I left home, he was clutching the receiver, frothing at the mouth. His face was turning purple. But all I did was ask him for a raise. You might just as well have shot him through the heart. On your father, Miss Duffy, that's a pretty small target. <laughs> <laughs> look, why does the guy hate me so? Hey, what makes you think that he hates you? I don't know. It's it's the funny way that he looks at me every time he says, Archie, I can't stand you. Granted. But don't forget he hates you less than he hates other people. And with Papa, that's the same as liking you. I see. After <clears throat> all, you know Papa. His bark is really worse than his bite. Well, that's only because he ain't got no teeth. <laughs> Miss Archie, hey, got something here for you. You got something for me? Yes. It ain't a left by any chance. Come up. <clears throat> Let's shoot a gun off around here. Anybody got a gun? We can shoot it either direction. I don't care. They can aim it at myself or we'll aim it at anybody you can think of here. What was you saying, young man? I got something for you. Don't know stuff. Yeah, what do you got? I got you. Yeah, it says, in the personal column, lonely lady would like to meet young escort. Well, that sounds pretty good. Must be tall. Yes. Athletic? Yes. Good dancer? Yes. Speak Hungarian. <laughs> oh, yeah. Too bad it ain't French. Uh, you speak French? No, but a Hungarian dame would never know the difference. <laughs> Anything else in that personal column, Eddie? Well, let's see here now. Man, three foot six. Wishes to contact woman of same size. Midgets need not apply. <laughs> Pretty choosy, ain't they, them little lily putzes? <laughs> but you know something, Eddie? That uh, personal column, that gives me an idea. You mean you're going to advertise for a rich wife? Why not? It's the good old American system of free enterprise. The, the right of every man to hook himself a rich dame. 
Eddie, uh, write down this ad, will okay, you? Okay, okay. Uh, got the pencil there? Yeah, man, I'm there. Okay, now, uh, independently wealthy tavern keeper seeks wife in similar straits. <laughs> Tall, uh, handsome, uh, intellectual. High style intellectual. Who knows? <laughs> uh, let's see, a debonair, uh, divine dancer. Look who's a divine dancer. May I remind you that at Roseland, I am still remembered as the only three-time winner of the pickle dish. <laughs> hey, Miss Archie, this idea of putting an ad in the personal column, it's crackpot. Mr. Green, it may amaze you to know that some of our greatest geniuses has been called crackpots. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> And again? Uh, what? No. Oh, not much. I'm uh, thinking of getting married. Oh, that's nice. To a dame? <laughs> of course, to a dame, you know. Oh. Sometimes being a bachelor, you know, gets kind of lonely. Take you. Uh, haven't you ever felt alone and, and deserted? Only when I'm with people. Oh. <laughs> but, like, why do you have to get married? Look, come here. Dude. Why don't you play it smart? Get divorced. Well, Penny, and you can't put the cart before the hearse. You can't get a divorce until you get married. Really? Gee, the married guys get all the breaks. You know something? You're beginning to talk like a philosopher. Well, a guy can't make sense all the time. <laughs> hey, uh, what kind of a dame you think you'll marry, Art? Oh, uh, well, I'm thinking of marrying a dame with plenty of dough, you know. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to marry for money. Oh. Well, why not? If the alley can't can do it, what can it do? Yeah, that's right. Miss uh, Austin, this uh, ad for the personal column. How do you want to sign it? Uh, sign it, uh, Prince Charming, uh, Majaraja of Pakistan. <laughs> okay, Sahib. <laughs> okay. Hello, Ars. What's going on? Uh, what's going on is terrible. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Ain't you heard? I'm, uh, I'm getting married. Oh, congratulations. Who's the lucky girl? Peaches Latour. Well, who's she? Yeah, she's the dame that ain't marrying him. <laughs> Quiet, Eddie. No, Joe, I'm, uh, marrying a very wealthy dame. What? You know, you wouldn't mind if this was subtle stuff. <laughs> I'm marrying a very wealthy dame, Joe. Uh, <clears throat> you are? Yeah. Uh, here, read me ad. Uh, well, Arch, I'm surprised. What would a guy like you do if you married a wealthy woman? Nothing, Joe. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, you know, you'll never get a woman this way. This ad. Well, you forget to mention the one thing you've got that'll attract any woman. Joe, you mean... I certainly do. Brains. <laughs> Funny, Joe, I could have sworn you was going to say Vitalis. Oh, well, uh, th that goes without saying. Really? It takes brains to know that Vitalis is just about the best thing you can use to keep your hair well-groomed, healthy-looking. That's because Vitalis protects your hair against the drying effects of the hot sun and all those extra showers you take in summer. Why, no other hair preparation can give your scalp and hair better protection than Vitalis and the 60-second workout. For the Vitalis formula contains two of the same ingredients that many skin specialists <laughs> prescribe for dry, flaky scalps. Plus all the other extras that make your hair more handsome, more healthy looking. So try the Vitalis 60 second workout. Let it prevent scalp and hair dryness, route flaky dandruff, and give you the best looking, healthiest looking head of hair you ever had. You look your best tomorrow if you get a bottle of Vitalis today. <laughs> Archie, look, look there. You got a got an answer to your ad in the personal column. No kidding, Eddie. Quick, uh -huh. open it up. Okay, let's see. Wait a minute. You say, Dear Prince Charming, I am a widow. Yes. My name is Agatha Pitts. Hmm. Eighty-four years old. How can you tell? Who do you know that has named his kid Agatha in the last eighty-four years? <laughs> Never uh, continue the letter. Oh, you know, in addition to, it says here, in addition to being independently wealthy, I am... Eddie, uh, what was that word? Independently. No. Addition? 
No. I am. <laughs> Eddie, stop frustrating me. Give me the letter. Hey, you're right. Independently wealthy. One little ad, and I meet Agatha. Me soulmate. <laughs> but I still think anybody that gets married is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I agree with you, Finnegan. You agree with him? Yeah. You? Bit of tea from a girl with a general yen. <laughs> and what's wrong with marriage? <laughs> Just that nobody that gets married is happy, Archie. On the au contraire. There's plenty of couples that's happily married. Name me one. How about Mr. and Mrs. Kelly? Her mother came to live with them. Oh. Well, uh, how about Millie, uh, Willie, and Mabel? Uh, now, there's a happy couple. You mean Mabel Higgins? Yeah. The one with the blonde hair and the dimples? That's right. The one that ran off with a good humor man? <laughs> the good humor man. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. She fell for him just because he had a car. Oh. Yeah. Now, you see what I mean, Archie? Well, that's just two cases. What about Harry and Maggie? That Maggie, what a devoted wife. Archie, remember what happened last week? Okay, so she poisoned him. <laughs> but did you happen to notice the way she cried at his funeral? <laughs> look here, look. What? Look at the lady getting out of that limousine, pulling up outside. Holy cat. <laughs> a brand new Cadillac limousine. Maybe that's your prospective bride. <laughs> Get a load of them lines. The lady? No, the limousine. <laughs> yeah, but look at the width of that body. The limousine? Uh-uh, the lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she sure looks like she got money, though. Yeah, she sure does. Good evening. I'm the night at the pits. I'm looking for Prince Charming. Oh. Agatha, let me look at you. Eddie, uh, can we turn the lights down a little lower? <laughs> what? It's more romantic that way. Oh. Uh, permit me, uh, my name is Archie, uh, uh, alias Prince Charming. Now, according to your letter, you are the widow Pitts. Yes, poor dear Herman is dead. Uh, you, you sure he's dead? <laughs> of course. You sure he ain't just hiding? <laughs> I beg your pardon. I mean, I'm sorry that the fella kicked off. Uh, oh, yes. yes. It was quite sudden. Yes. Well, uh, may I extend me heartiest condolences on your beaverment? <laughs> now, Agatha, uh, incidentally, you don't mind me calling you by your maiden name. Well, why not, Archie? <laughs> After all, you're a man, and I'm a woman. Well, that clears that up. Uh, Agatha, leave us put our cards on the table. I ain't only a man. I'm a lonely man. And you're a lonely woman. You think we could learn to stand each other? Uh, well, Archie, when I answered your ad in the paper, somehow I had the feeling that you were the one. Yeah, huh? Yes. Yeah. You see, I've always been a bit of a clairvoyant. Well, I'm no angel myself. <laughs> but enough about our tests. Look, Agatha, I don't mean to sweep you off your feet, but I think we have come to the point where further talk would be futile. <laughs> In other words, I feel the time has come for me to pop the question. The question? Yes. Agatha, how much dough you got? <laughs> Gee. Ain't I the curious little devil? <laughs> Look, Ag, uh, if this romance of ours is going to get anywhere, I uh, don't think we should conceal no secrets from each other. Well, uh, since you put it that way, Herman left me $100,000. Well, this calls for a proposal. Agatha, will you honor me the privilege of becoming me Russian bride? Oh, but Archie, this is so sudden. Oh, so what? I'm not going to get any younger, and you ain't going to get no richer. <laughs> well, well, really, I'll have to have time to think it over. I think I'll go for a ride around the park. Oh, but, okay, but uh, do, do you mind taking a taxi? Why? 
Well, in case the answer is yes, I wouldn't want to see the fenders dented on that limousine. <laughs> Uh, you have to think it over, huh? Uh, yes, I'm afraid so. Okay, well, farewell, sweet princess. I shall be waiting. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Mm. Eddie, why can't normal people have a hundred thousand bucks? <laughs> Eddie, it's almost three hours and Agatha ain't back yet. So what? Well, you think she's being unfaithful to me? Unfaithful? Yeah, spending a dough. <laughs> Archie, you know what I think of anybody that marries for money. Look, would it make you feel any better if I said I was marrying for love? Of course. Oh, so the truth ain't good enough for you, huh? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Here she comes now. Well, Agatha, quick, tell me, what's the answer? Archie, I thought it over, and the answer is yes. What gala news? <laughs> then this means that we are engaged? That's right. Splendid. Shall we seal it with a check? I mean, a kiss? A kiss? Very well. Okay, uh, pucker up your lips. Mm. Just a minute, I just remembered. Uh, <clears throat> I can't kiss you before the ceremony. Uh, it's uh, bad luck. Well, what about after the ceremony? Then it's pot luck. <laughs> Archie, where shall we go on our honeymoon? Our honeymoon? Well, frankly, I was sort of planning on going stag. <laughs> However, you said you have a hundred thousand bucks? Yes. Well, seeing that money is no expense, uh, <clears throat> why don't we take a cruise around the world? Oh, how romantic. Which way shall we go? East to west or west to east? Why don't we compromise? You go east and I'll go west. <laughs> oh, I love a man with a sense of humor. Oh, but to be serious, Archie, there is one important question I must ask you before we marry. What? Do you like children? Agatha, what's on your mind? <laughs> well, you see, Archie, we have a little son. Well, I... Th Would you mind to repeat that? <laughs> We have a little boy. We do, huh? How old? Fourteen. Boy, aren't you sure are a fast worker? Quiet, honey. And, uh, Agatha, you mean... Yes. Uh... Herman left me two things. A hundred thousand dollars and a son. Why didn't he quit one hour ahead? <laughs> Agatha, I, I think you should have mentioned it sooner, though. You, you, you didn't tell me that you came with accessories, you know. <laughs> How do you know? Maybe I don't like kids. Not like children? Well, in that case, we could never be married. Hundred grand. Agatha? Yes? Love little ones. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way. That's one thing I always disliked about Herman. He hated children. The late bounder. <laughs> Archie, I have an idea. Why don't I bring the little darling down here? I would love to meet the little cherub. As I say, with me, kids is Jake. Very well, I'll bring him down. See you later. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. <laughs> Daddy. What? Will you please tell me if that was story about the free little bell? <laughs> Very funny, Eddie. <laughs> I suppose you don't think I know how to handle kids. It happens I have read a lot of books about child psychology. Mm -hmm. And the one way to handle them is to prove immediately that the father is the child superior. How are you going to do that, wrestling? <laughs> Good I uh, uh, Can I meet your son? Well, Finney and I don't like to offend you, but I'd rather you'd stay away from the kid. Then. Why? Well, I'd like him to grow up with an open mind about the human race. <laughs> Well, anything you say, Arch. Any son of yours is a son of mine. Thank you. Boy, a hundred thousand smackers. I'll be set for life. I can see myself already, sitting in a big mansion. A roaring fire going. Wearing me velvet smoking pajamas and, uh, sipping brandy in the soft firelight. And Agatha Pitt sitting there with her arms round you. Well, you can't have everything. <laughs> Have you got a three-cent stamp handy? Well, look, 
That's all you need to get a generous sample package of mum. M-U-M. Mum, the underarm deodorant. No matter what other deodorant you've been using, I think you'll discover mum is the better way to safeguard your freshness and charm. Just send your name and address and that three-cent stamp to cover mailing costs to mum, box 888, General Post Office, New York 1, New York. You'll really like Mom because it's different. It has a unique cream formula that protects freshness all day, all evening. And because it contains no harsh or irritating ingredients, Mom is safer for skin, for clothes, and most important, for your personal charm. So use this easy, inexpensive way to get your package of Mom. Just send a three-cent stamp to Mum, M-U-M, Box 888, General Post Office, New York 1, New York. Do it tonight because this offer is limited. Remember, when you want to be sure you're nice to be near, use mum. Uh, hey, Art. Yeah? Uh, you remember you were talking about that uh, uh, child psychology? Yeah. I just borrowed this book about it. Uh, maybe you could use it. Oh, thanks. Uh, who'd you borrow it from? Uh, Mrs. Hogan. Mrs. Hogan? Yeah. The dame with the 19 kids. Oh, well, it was nice of her to let you have it. Well, she says she don't have much time to read anyhow. <laughs> well, let's see the book. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Chapter 1. Science divides children into two parts. Into two parts? Yeah. And we call ourselves civilized. Finnegan, please, I'm trying to read this book before my expectant son gets here. Oh, I... Not that I need a book. Kids all love me anyhow, you know. Well, Archie, I'm back. Oh, hello, Agatha. And this is our little boy, Egbert. Well, 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 so this is Egbert, huh? Well, my little man, uh, leave us shake hands. I am your new father. Hey, Mom, couldn't we dig up the old one? (laughs) Trouble. Hey, Bert, a little respect, please. Remember, this gentleman is to be your father. How do you like that? At my age, the son of Frankenstein. A cute little codger, ain't he? <laughs> I tried to explain to him about our marriage, Archie, but you know it's difficult for a child to grasp these things. Oh, well, leave me explain it to him. Uh, son? Yeah? You see, your mother is a widow, and I'm a lonely bachelor, and, well, like the birds and the bees say, uh, fate has thrown us together into the bonds of true love. Do you understand? Yeah, you're going to try to clip her for a hundred grand. <laughs> now, look, you, you crumb, I mean, Egbert, uh, uh, Daddy is not at all interested in your mother's wealth. Then why are you marrying her? I'm marrying her because... Well, uh... Do you have to be such a wise guy? <laughs> You know, maybe you wouldn't be such a bad father at that. Well, thank you. There's just one thing that bothers me, though. What? Which came first, you or the years? (laughs) Look, kid, you can't talk to me like that. Now, take off them glasses now. Mr. Archer. A punk kid like this. Remember, child psychology. Uh, Yeah, that. Mm. Well, Egbert, I guess boys will be boys. (laughs) Now, Agatha, about our honeymoon... Oh, uh... yes, I wanted to speak to you about that. What will we do with Egbert? Well, uh, we could send him to military school. But where? Oh, I don't know. What's wrong with Russia? <laughs> now, wait a minute, giraffe neck. <laughs> Egbert, shame on you calling your father names. Now, I want you to apologize. Okay. I'm sorry. Now kiss Daddy. Look, I just called him names. I didn't murder nobody. (laughs) Out of the mouths of babes are gonna come teeth. (laughs) Look, kid, why don't you go over in the corner there and uh, eat some of the free lunch? 
Your mother and me's got things to talk over. Now, uh, come, Agatha. Leave us be alone. I'd like to talk about our future. You know, where we'll live, uh, how much we're in love with each other. Uh... Hey, Pop. He's in again. <laughs> yes, son? When I grow up, I want to be just like you. Well, the psychology is working. <laughs> you want to grow up to be just like Daddy, huh? Yeah. So I can quit work and have a rich widow support me. <laughs> Now, just a minute, Egbert. Are you inferring that I am a piccolo? I'm inferring that you're a chiseler. <laughs> Look, kid, they don't come fast enough so that when they do come, you have to step on them. <laughs> <laughs> Give it another chance. <laughs> All right. Now, Egbert, come here. Come here, Egbert. I really love you. Come here. Because Daddy wants to give you a great big hug. Like this. Ow! Hey, my... Me. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Daddy loves him so much, he's almost squeezed him to death. <laughs> Wise guy, Aunt. Take this, Daddy. Ow! Ow, me finger! Archie, what do you mean by shoving your finger between Egbert's teeth? <laughs> <laughs> shoving me... Th- what are you talking? This egghead, he, he just bit me. Egghead? His name is Egbert. Just the same. If anybody's hungry, I wouldn't sprinkle salt on his head. Archie, how dare you talk that way about a little child. A child? That ain't no child. That's a souped-up midget. <laughs> look, look at me finger where he bit me. I'm, I'm going to hit that crumb on the head. Uh, Miss Archie, use your child psychology. I'll use me psychology, all right? Give me that book. Here, Egbert. Try this on your thick skull. Ow! Archie, you beast, and you said you like children. Our marriage is off. Good night. Hmm. Eddie? Yeah? Get a pencil. Another ad in the personal column? Yeah, take this down, will you? Uh, Ex-father uh, would like to meet widow with no children. Object, childless marriage. <laughs> Mister, we're sure of it. Try just one tube of Benex Brushless Shave Cream, and we're sure you'll use Benex for life. Because so many thousands of men have found that Benex, B-E-N-E-X, gives them the best shaves they've ever had. Benex gives extra easy shaves thanks to a special beard softening formula. Benex is extra smooth, lighter, so different it rinses off your razor instantly. Benex gives you extra comfort. A special after-shaving action leaves your face feeling wonderful. Just try Benex. See for yourself. Benex Brushless Shave. B-E-N-E-X. At your nearest drug counter. Get Benex tomorrow. I'm now to leave Duffy's Tavern for this evening, but let's meet here again at the same time next Wednesday. Duffy's Tavern is brought to you by Mum, the safer deodorant, and Vitalis for well-groomed hair. Each Wednesday, Bristol Myers bring you Duffy's Tavern and Mr. District Attorney, which follows immediately over most of these... This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.